Hello, beautiful, and welcome to The Prosperous Womb. Today, we're going to dive into a question that came up in a pricing workshop, which is, why is it that women coaches are still making way less money than men, way less income and sales than men, even though they've quit their corporate jobs and now have their own businesses? Like, what's going on? Here's the thing. There are two big reasons that I'm going to dive into today. There are millions of reasons why, but I'm going to dive into the top two that I've seen over the last six years and that even I have kind of used to self-sabotage my own business over the years. So as we look at this, I invite you to consider right now in your business, where are you leaving money on the table and why and who are you blaming for that? See, because making money in our business is a choice. We get to decide where to put the cap, where to create the income ceiling, what we're good enough for, what we're worthy of receiving, okay? It goes beyond mindset to making wiser business decisions. Let's dive in. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Mimi Dabo. I'm a high ticket business coach and I support spiritual women coaches and Christian women coaches to co-create profitable and simple high ticket coaching boutique so they can serve at a deeper transformational level, corporate expansion for clients in any coaching niche. And in their own businesses, they get to simplify with one high ticket coaching offer and they get to build, design, create the life they choose, the money they choose, the impact they choose, the wealth they choose, the body they choose, the family and relationships they choose, whatever they choose for their legacy in this lifetime. So why do men make more money? I don't have the generic answer to that, but I can point to two things in business. When clients come to work with me, the industry has promoted this monthly, short-term, reactionary income goal. So it's 10K months. This person made a 500K month. This person made a million K year. Like whatever it is, a million dollar year, whatever it is. So women coaches what I've noticed think in terms of months and years and they think in terms of income clients and sales and the few men that I've worked with think in terms of profit so when you think in terms of profit it is implicit that you're going to get clients income and sales okay and women don't even use the word profit. You know, people say to me, why do you call yourself a high ticket profit explosion coach? You know, women don't like that, especially spiritual women and Christian women. They just want to make money and, you know, create impact in the world and save the world and do good in the world, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. If you are creating a business that is not based on a profit generating impact and income, you would not make money in your business, let alone make enough money to make more money than men. All right. So the first thing is thinking in terms of profit. It's really creating a business that is profitable, that is sustainable, that is a going concern. What is a going concern? It means it's long time, long term, long term. It's long term, and you actually want to participate and keep doing it. It doesn't burn you out. You don't have to sacrifice your faith, your fun, your family, and your freedom or your lifestyle to do the business. Identify how can I increase profits in my business? And you know, making money in my business is like still sucking on breast milk. It's still feeding yourself breast milk. Stop being breastfed. Put on your big girl panties and bra and start making profits, making income, I want clients, I want to make 10K months or 100K months, I want to make sales, where can I find clients? That's all breast milk. Let's eat some real nourishing food for adults and start talking in terms of profits and wealth and legacy and generational impact. If you choose to, it's not mandatory. You can still suck on breast milk if you want all day. So again, profit is a business. Clients, sales, all that, is trying to run a business. Which one do you want? Most men that I know and I've worked with and I've mentored with are always profit-based. How do I 10x my profits? How do I 2x my profits? All while making impact. All while doing good in the world. All while giving money to their church or their temple or their whatever. Profit-based business. 
exploding profits so that you have a life and a business that wraps around that lifestyle. The second one is what I think is actually way more important because it's steeped so deeply in our minds and it's not just coaches that do this and that is working harder. Women are so programmed to believe that their worth, their value, their desirability comes from how hard they can prove themselves, how hard you can tr turn yourself into a pretzel. You're lazy if you're just doing 10 hour days. What's wrong with you if you have white space on your calendar? And women flock to these mediocre men who are telling them, if you have white space on your calendar, I can fill it up for you. What the hell are you thinking? Your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your sleep, your adrenals. Are you kidding me? You are not, you are not built like a man. They can do that stuff. You don't need to work harder. You need to work wiser. I invite you to consider working wiser, creating more white space on your calendar and taking care of yourself to create profit. Anything else is just running a regular business. To be at that supernatural level, it invites the thing of how can I co-create with God using his wisdom and how can I love myself like my life depends on it. So I always challenge women when I'm working with them to love themselves like their life depends on it. If you love yourself like your life depends on it, what will you sell? What will you create? Who will you work with? What will you tolerate? What boundaries will you set? And what will be your minimum standard for what's going to come into your bank account every month? When you love yourself like your life depends on it, what will you put in your body? What will you eat? When will you sleep? How many hours will you spend for you every day. What does that look like? Simply put, from my perspective, there's so many different ways you could do this. Working wiser to me, to me means creating a high ticket coaching offer. Going from selling $197 offers to make a $10,000 month to creating one $10,000 offer. Give yourself the space. And no matter what you do, whether you choose low ticket or high ticket, Give yourself the grace to run the race at your own pace with God's wisdom and midwifing the gifts from your prosperous womb. That is key. No matter what business you're in and no matter whether you're high ticket, low ticket, mid ticket, whatever ticket, no ticket. Okay. So let's get practical. Look at your offer right now. When you think to, my, to yourself, I want to make, I want to double my income. I want to triple my income. I want to turn my annual income into my monthly income. And you're already working 40 hours a week. What comes up for you when you think, if I'm going to double this, what comes up? Is it, shoot, what do I have to do? How hard do I have to work? How many more clients do I have to get? Do I have to create another offer? Do I have to do another lunch? Do I have to find people to drop into my open, open spots in my group program? Do I have to like have no space on my calendar. I'm never going to see my kids or my husband. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get a divorce because I'm working harder. I won't have time to sleep or eat or go on vacation. Or do you think, how can I simplify my life with one high ticket coaching offer or two or three, but one high ticket coaching offer that is priced in a way that supports me to meet my profit and impact goals. So I look at my offer what am I selling? How is it packaged and how is it priced? Who am I selling it to and how many people do I need to work with to meet that goal? And what, are, what is the impact and what are the results? And how is my own nervous system? Does my ego depend on me having 35 women in a group? Or am I okay creating that impact with one person? It just takes one person to create impact. Or do I need to follow the standard of get 10 more clients in 10 days, 90K in nine days? Or do you run at your own pace? So look at your business now. How can you create a solid offer that does not require you to bend over backwards, that does not require you to work all hours of the day? How can you create that boundary, high ticket, potent body of work how much can you sell it for at the highest level and serve at the highest level so you don't have to double the time so that you don't get into this mindset trick of the, the, you say, I want to make my money and the body says, no, 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 your nervous system is like, no, 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 we can't handle that. You know how, do you know what you have to do to get that money? And you say, yes, 
I slash the number of hours I work a week. I go from working 40 hours a week to 20 hours a week and working with two women. That's it. And I get to decide, do I want to write a book? Do I want to travel? Do I want to enjoy my life? What do I want to do? But you get to choose the cap on your income. You get to choose the cap on your profit. So think profits and think, do I put a cap on my income because I have low self-esteem, because I don't feel valuable or I don't think I'm worth it? Or do I serve at the highest level with the most simple, most impactful offer that can create the impact and legacy I desire in this lifetime. So let me know how this lands for you. Let me know in your business what comes up for you when you think you want to double your income, when you think you want to make more money. Like what comes up for you? What do you think about you being the powerful one who actually has the power to decide whether you get to make more money than men. Let's end that narrative. Let's take our power back and let's own our wealth. It's been good having you.